Hello, everyone. My name is Jianliang Wu. Today, I'm going to present Blisa, spoofing attacks against reconnections in Bluetooth Low Energy. This is a joint work with Yu Hong, Virashva, Dave, Antonio, Matthias, and Dong Yan. BLE was introduced in 2011. It's mainly designed for power-constrained devices, such as smart home devices, for example, a smart temperature sensor, and healthcare devices like a smart glucose monitor. The number of BLE devices grows rapidly in recent years. According to Bluetooth SIG, there will be over 5 billion BLE devices shipped in 2023. Given the popularity of BLE devices, the security of BLE is important. There are four different security levels in BLE, level 1, 2, 3, and 4. There's no security in level 1, no encryption, no authentication. Encryption is enabled for level 2, and both the encryption and authentication are enabled for level 3 and 4. Then BLE, how to enable the encryption and authentication? The same two Bluetooth classic, BLE uses pairing to build the trust between two devices. And different types of, of keys are generated based on the capability of these devices. For example, if one device does not have the I.O. interface, the generated key during pairing is not authenticated, and it can only be used for level 2 for encryption. But if both devices have the I.O. capabilities, during pairing, a notification will be popped up to the user to check whether the two pins showed on these two devices are the same or not. If they are the same, the generated key is authenticated and it can be used in security level 3 and 4. But different from Bluetooth Classic, BLE has a server client architecture. The client and the server communicate in a request and response scheme. The data is stored on the server as attribute, and each attribute can have a different security requirement. For example, these two attributes can be stored on a fitness tracker. The security requirement for device name is level 1, and the requirement for battery level is level 2. When the server receives a request from the client, it checks whether the current security level meets the requirement of the attribute. For example, if the current security level is 1, and the client sends a request to, for battery level to the server, the server checks the requirement for battery level, which is 2, and found the current security level is 1, which doesn't meet the requirement. And then the server rejects the request and responds with an error message. While if the client sends a request for device name, the server will grant the access and responds with the value, which is over ring, of the device name attribute to the client. Though the BLE has those security mechanisms, it's not secure. For example, if two B BLE devices are paired using legacy pairing, they are vulnerable to evil dropping attacks. And if a malicious app is installed on the, on the smartphone, the attacker can illegally access the BLE devices, such as reading a glucose level or opening a smart lock. Or even worse, the attacker can launch many the middle attacks and manipulate the user data against unpaired BLE devices. Some prior attacks targeting the pairing procedure when the two devices first connect, or targeting the unpaired devices. Some other prior attacks need additional assistance, such as a malicious app, to launch the attack. But the reconnection procedure in BOE is an export. In our work, we focus on the following scenario. These two devices are paired and connected, and then one device moves up to of the range and they disconnected. After a while, the device moves back and it intends to reconnect to a previous, previously paired device. 
So in our work, we carried out a formal analysis of this and explored reconnection procedure in BLE, and we identified the two weaknesses. Based on this weakness, we propose BLE spoofing attack that can attack paired devices without additional assistance. And at last, we evaluate our identified weaknesses and the attack on real-world BLE devices. We build our model and verify the model using ProVerif. We verify three types of security properties, confidentiality, integrity, and authenticity. The details of our formal analysis can be found in our paper. Through our analysis, we identified two weaknesses. One is, in some cases, the authentication is optional. And the second is, in some other cases, the authentication can be circumvented. There are two types of authentication procedures defined in the specification, reactive and proactive. Our analysis shows that there's a design issue in the reactive authentication procedure, and therefore it can be bypassed. And if the proactive authentication implementation does not strictly follow the specification, it can also be bypassed. Based on this weakness, we propose BLE spoofing attack that can attack paired devices. And we will introduce uh, how Blisa can attack reactive and proactive authentication one by one. Okay, let's first see how reactive authentication works, and then I'll show how Blisa can attack it. As I described previously, the client and the server are paired. And now the client and the server are disconnected and the client intends to reconnect to the server. We use the battery level attribute as an example. First, the client sends the connection request to the server to establish the connection. And then the client sends a request for the attribute level to the server. The server receives the request and uh, checks the requirement for this attribute. The server rejects the request and responds with an error message because the current security level does not meet the requirement. After receiving the error message, the client enables the encryption because both the client and the server have the secret key generated during pairing. After encryption, the client sends the request again Note that uh, since the communication is encrypted and the security level is level 2 now, the server checks the requirement and responds with the value of the attribute, which is 90%, to the client. The client receives and accepts the, the value. And let's see how we Blisa can attack this. First, the attacker clones the MAC address of the server and advertises it as the server, so that when the client reconnects to the server, it can connect to the attacker. The first two steps are the same. The client establishes the connection and sends a request for battery level to the attacker at SCP level 1. The attacker can directly send a spoofed value, which is 0 to the client. In this case, since the client does not receive an error message, it doesn't enable encryption, and it receives and accepts the spoofed value, which is zero. Then I'll show how proactive authentication works and how Blisa can attack this. The client first sends the connection request to the server. But different from reactive authentication, client tries to enable encryption right after the connection. Since both of them have the secret key, the encryption is enabled. Then the client sends the request for the battery level attribute to the server at security level two. The server checks the requirement and responds with the value of the attribute to the client. 
the client accepts the value. Then let's see how Blizzard can attack this. The attacker still needs to clone the MAC address and advertises as the server. The first two steps are the same, establish the connection and send and tries to enable the connection, uh, sorry, tries to enable encryption. In this case, the attacker can respond with an error message so that the encryption fails. In some implementations, even though the encryption fails, the connection is not aborted, but instead the connection continues in plain text and the client can still send the request in plain text. Similar to previous attack, the attacker can directly respond with a spoofed value, and the client receives and accepts the spoofed value. We evaluate our identified two witnesses and uh, place an attack on real-world devices. We guide our evaluation by answering these questions. For weakness one, we will answer whether the BOE apps use authentication, during reconnection, and whether the real world device, uh, server de BOE device is using authentication. For weakness two, we will answer which authentication procedure is used for mainstream BOE stacks, and whether the used authentication procedure is vulnerable to police. To answer the first question, we analyzed 127 BOE apps on Android, and we found 86 of it do not use authentication during reconnection. To answer question two, we analyzed 12 BOE server devices that we have, as listed in the table, and we found only two of them use authentication during reconnection. To answer these two questions for weakness two, we analyzed the four mainstream BOE stack implementations on different platforms and operating systems, including Linux, Android, iOS, and Windows. We found that the Linux BOE stack uses reactive authentication and is vulnerable to Blizzard. Android, iOS, and Windows use proactive authentication procedure, but both Android and iOS do not strictly follow the specification and are vulnerable to Blisa. Only Windows BOE stack strictly follow the specification and is immune to Blisa. We will show a demo of Blisa against a fitness tracker or a ring. We can see that the phone and the ring is pa are paired now. Then we open the app. The phone is connecting to the ring and re reading data. The battery level is 43%. Then we launch the spoofing attack from a laptop. And we reopen the app. The phone is reconnecting to the ring. But this time, the phone connects to our laptop, and our laptop is feeding spoofed data to the phone. The phone receives the data, and we can see the battery level is zero now. And another spoofed message charging is complete. And the phone also accepts this message. Even though the battery level is zero, but it still shows the charging is complete. And then after the attack, we can see that those two devices are still paired. Our evaluation and prior research show that Blizzard can affect at least 8,000 BOE apps on Android, 
with 2.38 million installations. We believe similar number may also apply to iOS. And Blizzard can affect more than 1 million, 1 billion BLE devices. Our findings are also covered in an article published on Security Boulevard. We responsibly disclosed our findings to Apple. Apple acknowledged our findings and assigned a CVE number to the vulnerability. We also reported our findings to Google on April 8th, and we received the following response. They believe it is a duplicate of another report submitted three days earlier than us. Different approaches can be adopted to defend against Blizzard. For reactive authentication, the specification needs to be updated by either removing the reactive authentication or adding more approaches to enhance it. For proactive authentication, the implementations need to strictly follow the specification. And specifically for Linux, Linux BLE stack, uh, it can change the from the proactive authentication to reactive authenticate. Sorry, change from pro reactive authentication to proactive authentication. To sum up, we carried out a formal analysis of the BLE reconnection procedure and identified two witnesses. Based on the weakness, we proposed Belisa, which can attack paired devices without any additional assistance. We evaluate our weaknesses and the attack on real-world devices, and we responsibly disclosed our findings to the vendors. That's all for my presentation. Thank you.